Um, vintage Halloween spoopy. It's that time of year. I wanted to make some Halloween decorations for my house, specifically vintage-y kind of things. I feel like I've watched Over the Garden Wall like five times the past couple weeks because it's fall and that's what you gotta do. So I'm really inspired by that. I feel like Over the Garden Wall has become this Halloween classic, like many of the Christmas classics, like Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer and Frosty the Snowman. Halloween has Wirtin Greg and also the Sanderson sisters. So I've never really drawn in that vintage -y style before, but I can do anything. I'm gonna try to go through the steps as best I can so that way I can give you guys an idea of how I did it so you can copy it at home and maybe create some of your own spooky little pumpkins. And I'm planning on painting those pumpkin slash apple looking things I got from Target. And I'm thinking about maybe making some sort of garland of bats or even just single a single bat would be cool too. And I want them all to be vintage -y inspired. I have a pumpkin that I grew back in like May and it stayed very nice considering how long it's been around. Pumpkins last a long time if you don't cut into them. If you make a jack-o'-lantern and you cut into them, then they'll be moldy within the next day. I was thinking of maybe painting that pumpkin as well. I kind of want to keep it and see how long it lasts. I want to see how long it takes for it to start getting nasty because it's been months now and that thing is still going strong. Okay, let's get started. I've got my supplies and I'm ready to go. I'm probably not going to wear this the whole time because it's actually will probably get in the way. Okay, so these are the drawings that I drew with my hands. I'm inspired by vintage stuff and this is the ideas I have in my head. This is what I made. Okay. These are pretty nice. They're thick. They're thick girls. All right, I've got my brushes. I've got my water that I might mistake for coffee later on in this video. Fellow artists know what's up. First, I'm gonna be using some yellow. I'm gonna wet my brush a little first. Get some of that yellow on there. This is going to be the base coat. Um, using like a brighter color or a contrasting color underneath can sometimes just make the end result more interesting. I don't know how to explain it. Like it just will like make it more glowy looking. It's kind of like how an actual jack-o'-lantern looks yellow and glowy from the inside. So that's the color you'd want to use. I'm going to try to go around the edges of this as well. Once that's done, you can move on to the next step. Now I'm going to be drawing the face. I'm going to be using the sketches I drew last night as reference for this. So I'm going to give this one big old eyes. So I noticed a lot of vintage Halloween cards, like the pumpkins on there, have weird eyes. So I was going for something a little bit different with this. And I was thinking I could maybe put some stars in there. The nose is just going to be a little upside down heart. And I'm going to put that a little bit lower, like level to the eyes. And I'm going to add like the little bit of the inside. You can see I'm going to give him some cute rosy cheeks and a show-stopping smile. It's a little off, but I kind of like it. Gotta draw in the teeth. It's not perfectly symmetrical, but I like it. Next step, I'll be painting the rest of the pumpkin. So we're gonna go with orange, of course. You're gonna need a whole lot. I'm going to be using a slightly smaller brush for this one and maybe even include even smaller blush. <laughs> maybe include even smaller brushes than this because there's lots of little details. Oh yeah. Paint it. Get that paint on there. Ah. It starts to get difficult when you get into like all like the smaller details. So just get like a smaller brush for that. Keep going around all the little details. Don't forget to go around the edges as well. And I'm not going around doing a second coat for this because I, again, I want the little bits of yellow from the undercoat to show through. Okay, it's not quite coffee yet, but I need to be careful because it's starting to look like orange juice. Okay, next I am going to be working on the mouth and eyes. I'm going to use a slightly lighter orange than the other one, maybe even mix a little bit more yellow into it. 
um, just as a gradient in between the yellow from the inside of the jack-o-lantern and the orange from the outside. And I'm just gonna paint the inside piece. I also added a little shading to the inner corners of the mouth and the nose. Next, I decide on the shade of red for the blush. I ended up going for scarlet. Again, I just watered down my brush a little bit and picked up a little bit of pigment and I filled in where the blush is gonna go. I picked up a little bit of red for the outlines of the teeth as well. I just feel like it would help give it a more glowy effect than if I used black and it's just a watered down red, so it'll appear more orange, like it was carved into the pumpkin. I used red to outline the inside of the pumpkin eyes as well. I'm going to paint the stem green. I'm gonna make a little V, like off center, and I'm gonna fill in the rest of that space with the green. And for this, I am going to do a couple layers of green just to make it nice and vibrant. So I noticed a lot of the vintage style pumpkins I have in my house have some sort of darker pupils so I want to incorporate that in mine. I'm going to water down my brush and take a little bit of this dark ultramarine blue and I'm going to start by just adding a little bit on the inside and I'm going to make it gradient so it slowly turns back to yellow as it goes up. And I'll be doing that by adding uh, more water, thinning it out. It's almost going to create like this greenish color at the top where the blue meets the yellow. And I'm going to slowly layer on more and more blue until the bottom looks pretty dark. And that's not quite dark enough for me, so I go ahead and add a phylosane blue on top of that to help add a little bit more depth. I'm going to take more of that dark blue and I'm going to outline the edges of the eyes to help them pop more. Ah, it's hard to do. I'm also going to outline the outside of the little heart nose. And I'm going to take more red and outline the edges of the mouth once again just to make it deeper and darker. I'm going to outline the stars in the dark blue as well. I'm going to mix a little bit of orange into the red and I'm going to use that to add some details to the pumpkin. I'm going to be adding some of the stripes that you see. I guess they're not really stripes, they're more like little curves. I'm going to do some dots. I'm going to add another one here. You're just going to keep going all around and try to, they don't have to be perfectly symmetrical. They just, you just kind of want them to line up a bit. I'm going to take a lighter green and I'm going to draw some details. And this guy's looking kind of lonely, so I'm going to make him a little friend. Yes. For this, I'm going to be doing essentially the same thing except making some minor changes, switching up the face a bit, and adding a little bit different colors. I'm basically doing the same process as before. Let's paint the base yellow. It's starting to look like coffee. This time I'm going for rounder eyes, a little smaller. So go ahead and draw the eyelashes on top. I'm going to make them a little thick. Make them a little varying sizes. There. I add a mouth. This time I want to give her some cheeks going over the sides. And I'm going to add some teeth as well. Because everybody loves a pumpkin with teeth. I forget, I wanted them kind of looking at each other, so I'm going to switch these to the other sides. And I'll just paint over it so it looks better. Add the orange. I'm going to add these little cheeks to the smile. I'm going to use some magenta for this pumpkin's eyes. And then I'm going to add some of the dark blue on top of that and make that gradient as well. Next, I add the outline to the nose and eyes with dark blue and I add the eyelashes. 
I want to add a little bit extra to this one, so I will be adding a pumpkin leaf. And I'll paint this side a slightly lighter green. I also added some stars into her eyes. And finally, I'll add some of those little pumpkin notches and stripes. Boop! And there you have it! Two adorable pumpkin friends! So I'm thinking about naming this one Pearl and this one Beelzebub. They're going to be BFFs until pie. I hope this gave you a good idea on how to make cute little pumpkins. So these guys are pretty small and tiny, so I'm going to make them a big sister to help protect them. This pumpkin I grew a while back has a big scar, so I'm going to have to just work around that. I got this red sharpie and I'm going to outline the features with it right onto the pumpkin. It's pretty much the same face as the other two, just bigger. I paint a big old smile. It looks like a yellow hot dog. It's essentially the same thing that I did for the last two pumpkins. Next is the bat garland. I cut out four bat shapes, sewed them up without turning them right side out, and then I stuffed them with some stuffing I had lying around, and I sewed back up that stuffing hole. I got back out my acrylic paint and started painting on the face. I was inspired by this vintage bat. The design is fairly simplistic. I added some blush by adding some orange paint and rubbing it in and then red on top of that, and I added yellow for the eyes and then added the pupils. I gave a couple of the bats some smiles. They're excited for the candy. Next, the garland. I sewed some loops out of green ribbon and strung sparkly orange ribbon through those. And voila, my bat garland was finished. And I got all my little creations together in one spot. Happy little family. All right, thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed, please like and subscribe. All right, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Mm. Bottoms up. Yeah. Um, I don't know why I made myself do that. <laughs>